Hi, good evening. You're watching Beyond the Headline. I'm Tamanna Inamdar. Now, investigative agencies have had a busy day in various parts of the country today with action taken against political leaders across many states. Today on the show, we're going to look at some of these cases and address the oft-repeated question on whether the claims of investigative agencies being used as a political tool are valid or not. And now, the usual pattern in these cases is that an agency like the Enforcement Directorate or the CBI conducts raids, launches investigations or calls in people for questioning. Prominent political leaders uh, are usually at the receiving end of these allegations and these actions are followed by loud declarations of political vendetta and innocence. But how many of these investigations actually end up in convictions? The issue of corruption in Indian public life is an important one and resonates with citizens. There can be no condoning or excuses for ill-gotten gains by those in position of power. But is there any truth to claims of selective targeting? Let's look at some of the recent cases that have hit the headlines. Now, in Maharashtra today, the Enforcement Directorate raided multiple locations as part of a money laundering investigation into State Transport Minister of the Maharashtra government, Anil Para. This is in connection with alleged irregularities in a land deal in the Ratnagiri district of the state. Now, while Parab is being investigated under the PMLA, that's the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, another Sena leader, Yashwan Jadhav, has been summoned by the ED for alleged violations of FEMA, that's the Foreign Exchange Management Act. So this was the response of Sena leaders to this probe. <laughs> अनिल परब आणि आमच्या इतर सहकाऱ्यांवर लावले जातात ईडीकडून त्यापेक्षा गंभीर प्रकारचे गुन्हे भारतीय जनता पक्षाच्या लोकांवर आहेत पण त्यांना कोणी हात लावत नाही आम्ही सगळे पक्ष आणि सरकार अनिल परब यांच्या पाठीशी ठामपण उभे आहोत तुम्ही सुडाच्या आणि बदल्याच्या भावनेनं कितीही कारवाया केल्या Meanwhile, in Delhi, the CBI questioned Congress MP Karthi Chidambaram for nine hours uh, today in connection with an alleged scam pertaining to the issuance of visas to 263 Chinese nationals in 2011 when uh, his father, P. Chidambaram, was Home Minister. This is what Karthi Chidambaram said today. Say, I've already said what I've said. It's so a bogus they, case. They, they, they ask you for FA tomorrow? Then I don't know. They let me see. But it's a, it's, a, it's a nothing of consequence. It means nothing. This is a bogus case and a bogus investigation. Are you all. satisfied with that, the, uh, the way agency is uh, treating you? There is nothing to... They always treat me with courtesy. But there is nothing to ask me. That's the whole point. Uh, it has been alleged about the facilitation. Yeah. Then you should go ask the people who make the allegation, not to me. Thank yes, you. Bhaskar Ramana is already arrested, sir. Do you think this is a political vendetta against you? Absolutely. 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 Now, let's move to Bengaluru, where the ED has filed a charge sheet against Karnataka Congress President D.K. Shivakumar and others in connection with alleged money laundering cases. Mr. Shivakumar is, of course, no stranger to such allegations. Let's listen in to what he said. I'm very confident that I have not done anything wrong. It is a political instigated case, purely politics. Well, anything is there, I'm a businessman by profession, as I've said you earlier also, Bartha, I'm an agriculturist, by profession I'm a businessman, so by passion I'm a politician, by choice I'm an educationist, I've said this already. So now also I would like to tell that they are bound to do the charge sheet, it was a little bit late but they have done it, so, the final so it, it is between me and the court now. Now, on, on the other hand, there were searches today at 16 locations in Jharkhand, including at the residence of former Jharkhand Sports Minister Bandhu Tirke, in connection with alleged irregularities in a multi-crore games equipment purchase for the 34th National Games held in Ranchi in 2011. Let's also listen in to what Tirke said. The Janta Party ke jo galat hai us par virot karne par. जो बोलता है जो उसके खिलाफ लड़ता है उसको इस तरह का सीबीआई का डंडा दिखा के डराने का काम करती है ठीक है जांच हो रहा है मेरा जांच करें छापामारी हो रहा है बिल्कुल करें कोई आपत्ति नहीं लेकिन इसके पहले जो आपने क्लोजर रिपोर्ट दिया था उसमें क्या मिला 
ये इस चीज को राज की जनता जानना चाहती है आज जो आप छापामारी कर रहे हैं सरसों के दाना बराबर भी कुछ मिलेगा आपको राज की जनता के बीच में सार्वजनिक करना होगा मैं ये आगरा सीबीआई के पदाधिकारियों को और इनसे एक गिदड़ भपकी है हम ना डरने वाले हैं झुकने वाले हैं मैं लड़ूंगा Okay, now let's take a look at what are the kinds of charges usually applied in these cases and their uh, economic offences because it's all about corruption and preventing corruption. So, Prevention of Money Laundering Act is the uh, oft applied Foreign Exchange Management Act, Prevention of Corruption Act, and Prohibition of Benami Property Transactions Act is another one of those cases which is applied. Now, the issue of whether these actions are politically motivated or not are not new. You heard a slew of leaders today saying that they're completely innocent, it's bogus, etc. Uh, and these allegations are not restricted to just this political regime. That's also important to remember. Here is what the Supreme Court had said in connection with the Cole case in 2013. And I'm just putting out some quotes of what they said then. CBI has become a caged parrot speaking in its master's voice. Uh, they've also said uh, that giving unbridled power to the CBI is not possible. They also went on to say CBI has become the police force and is in control of center. But the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So we must ask, what are the conviction rates in these cases? Let me present some data to you. As per the annual CVC report in 2020, of 266 cases, 169 were convicted and 65 acquitted. As per answers in the Lok Sabha, between July 2005 to 2022, of 3,086 searches, there were just 23 convictions. Now, the next aspect we should look at when really going beyond the headline on the story is why this constant accusation against agencies. And the question to ask here is who's the boss? The CBI director, for example, is appointed by the center a three-member panel recommends that appointment and the Prime Minister is the chairperson of the appointment panel. The leader of opposition is also part of the appointment panel as is the Chief Justice of India or a nominated Supreme Court judge. And the tenure of the CBI director is fixed at two years. Let's take a look at the Enforcement Directed Director who is appointed as per the Central Vigilance Commission Act. Uh, the center appoints uh, this individual on the recommendation of a panel of the Central Vigilance Commission. Uh, part of this uh, panel is the Central Vigilance Commissioner. He's a chairperson. Secretaries in Finance Home uh, are also panel members and the uh, person's tenure could not be less than two years. A transfer, and this is important, requires the appointing committee's sanction. Is that enough of a check and balance to stop these allegations? To speak more on this and understand in a deeper sense why these allegations come about and are they justified, I'm speaking now with Shantanu Sen, former joint director of the CBI and Yashovar Azad, former IPS officer. Welcome to both of you and great to have you on Beyond the Headline. Mr. Sen, let me begin with your take. We've talked about a slew of action and cases just from today and of course uh, there may be many more going on in the last few weeks and coming ahead one common thread is that whoever's at the receiving end says they're innocent and this is motivated because of politics it's something that people tend to believe because uh, all of the people mentioned today are from opposition parties do you think there's a grain of truth to this the charges can always be made in such circumstances See, what we are seeing nowadays, increasingly corruption cases are being launched against people who are not in the office at present. They were in the office and they had committed acts of corruption allegedly, and now they are being investigated. The proof of the pudding is in the eating of it. How does this investigation fare? Are these cases concocted? Are they, are they made up cases? No. If that is so, they will be easily thrown out by the court. So, investigation by itself is not an attack on anybody's integrity. It is an allegation. And when you are in power and when you are alleged to have made money or done something which is pecuniary advantage to somebody else,
and that has come up now, naturally investigation will take place. Yes, I can understand the anxiety of the opposition because the investigations are being directed only against those who are in the opposition. The people who are not in, not in power nowadays are facing this investigation. And those in power, if they are doing any acts of corruption, are escaping investigation. This is probably a feeling of uh, uh, unhappiness about these charges. But that cannot be helped. These cases of corruption come up after long inquiries and investigations, secret verifications. So they take time. We have to only see whether they are concocted investigations. If they are not, delay in starting investigation is no, is, has no uh, feet. After all, recently we have seen an MP of the Conservative Party facing a rape charges of 2009 and 2010. So, in a country which, is, which has uh, the Magna Charta of from 807 years, so democracy is that old, also has to take up investigation when they are urged to do so. Look at the party gate investigations. They did not start immediately by the police. Mm -hmm. They were caught and then the Conservative Party was investigated. Of course, in our country, people in power are not investigations. There are stray instances like the late Mr. Sukram, who was investigated when he was in power. Similarly, in the days of Mr. Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, we had Mr. Malviya of the ONGC facing right. investigation. There have been cases taken up for investigation against those in power. But now they are being taken against those who have been in power. And nobody can say they are false cases till the court describes them as false. No, absolutely. It's, it's a process, and that's why we put out some statistics on conviction rate. But the fact is that it's not only about what eventually happens. It's about the process and then how it is politically utilized, which is why it becomes such a bone of contention. Uh, Miss, uh, uh, let me just add one point. Let yes, me sir. just add one point. Yes, Our sir. cases in court take a long time. Yes. The urea scam, for instance. The urea scam is a case which has ended in conviction of public servants and private persons. But it has taken 23 years in court. Now, if you remember, urea scam was there in 1996. Mm. That the delay in results in investigation cannot be a a point against starting investigations. Fair enough. Investigations Fair. in the corrupt start late. It, and, and the investigations start late, often. as you mentioned, often. And then the judicial process takes its time. But um, the bone of contention, as I said, is that in the interim, that particular leader is seen as a corrupt politician, something which everyone is very willing to believe in general of Netas. Unfortunately, that's the impression, fortunately or unfortunately. So, Mr. Azad, let me uh, work into that. The question over here is, are investigative agencies acting independently in true fashion, and how would we know? Because you can always put a question mark either way, right? So, has my turn come now? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Great job. Now, there are two parts uh, to your uh, question. First is the leadership of the various agencies like ED or CBI. And second is the kind of investigation and the kind of people who are being investigated. Now, it's very clear in India that we have a very, very serious problems with the institutions, and especially when it comes to the security agencies. Uh, first is that most of these investigations are late. And second is they are selective. But mind you, this is not only now, uh, it's, it's right from before. You will remember there were times during uh, Indira Gandhi's regime or even earlier regime when the CBI or the other agencies were allegedly only tapping and tracking the opposition's uh, uh, movements, etc. Now, what has happened now is, of course, there is more electronic media, there is more media exposure, and therefore things are coming to light uh, you know, many more often times. Now, per se, 
it is difficult to manufacture a charge. So most of these cases, there is some allegation and there is some truth to this allegation. Mm. And somehow there is a feeling in this country that the politicians or people who have, you know, become lawmakers that, you know, you cannot investigate against them. And anything which is brought against them becomes a political kind of a, uh, you know, plan, a strategy, a conspiracy. But as Mr. Sen said, you know, if it is so manufactured, if it's so uh, created from nowhere, then all these cases can be thrown out of the courts. The problem is twofold. One is, of course, the corrupt corruption cases take a long time. It is also very, very difficult to, keep, to prove corruption cases in India. You don't believe the police, you don't believe witnesses, you don't believe anyone. There are so many problems which are there. And secondly, the cases rock back and forth depending on how poor the leadership. Unfortunately, despite giving such a lot of autonomy to the CBI, we've seen some real, real poor leadership. It, 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 you know, at least in four cases, I can vouch for that. And otherwise also, EU might have very good officers, but being just very good and just writing good on note sheets does not make you a good officer. It has to be backed by spine and spunk. So if you have the autonomy, you've got to show it. And unfortunately, this has not been shown. This problem, which is there for the ED or for the CBI, will continue. In fact, I've written an article that all we can hope for is for a few good men who can stand tall. That is one way. If you look at the opposition response, you will find that all they are talking about is about political conspiracy right. and a political vendetta, but they are not talking about fixing the institutions or giving them more autonomy or talking about investigation, which means that when they will be in power, <laughs> the things will continue to be seen. So that's why we are in a trap right now. And let's see whether the public discourse, more discussions and debates will lead to some kind of a solution in the future. So, so you said essentially that, you know, there can be, and I'm just loosely summing up, that there can be no smoke without fire. There's something that starts off an investigation. Follow up for Mr. Azad. Um, does this give light to the point of view that if there is a case against XYZ politician, they've probably done something wrong in any case? Now, in the public's mind, which is... Uh, where the politician has to prove himself or herself uh, in the grounds of election, that's bad enough, isn't it? You're talking to me? Yes, yes, Mr. Azad, that's a follow-up. Yes, sorry. My point is that the act of opening up an investigation against a politician uh, is enough to convince people that this person's done something wrong and that will well, harm them. So, that is, so what no, happens no. in court many, many years later possibly becomes secondary. Yes, so it depends, you know, what kind of what kind of judgment the court gives. Has has he has he got a you know honorable discharge from the court? Has has the court uh, you know uh, released him because of lack of evidence? So there are a lot of ways you can get there. As as Mr. Sen again said earlier, merely opening an uh, investigation does not blacklist a politician. But yes, when you are selectively targeting a person just before elections. Yes, it leads to doubt in the minds of the people because that is the kind of system or polity that we have. That's unfortunate. But the other thing is, technically, you can't tell uh, 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 investigative agencies that elections are around the corner, so please don't investigate. That's Absolutely. another problem. Absolutely. So both sides, you have to balance. How, how do we, how do we uh, dispel the impression, and once again, I ask Mr. Sen this, is it correct or not, that investigative agencies are often used as a political tool no matter who's in power? That is a very widespread uh, you know, impression that people have, Mr. Sen. Firstly, do you think it's correct or not? And if it's not, then how do you dispel it? The people may have impressions. Because the impression should be based on certain things, certain forthright things. The prowess of the CBI investigating ability is acknowledged. You see today, whatever the High Court and the Supreme Court says, 
But when it comes to a difficult investigation in West Bengal or in Maharashtra, and these are two states who have denied CBI the right to investigate on its own, mm -hmm. they use their constitutional powers to direct CBI to investigate in these states. So the Supreme Court and the High Courts acknowledge that the CBI is the best investigating agency available. It may not be as good as you want it to be, or it may not be as good as it used to be, but it is still the best in the country, and the Supreme Court and the High Court relies upon it. Yes, the question arises if CBI takes up an investigating case against the in the on the direction of the government. People will say you are playing f favoritism. But if the charge is true, what can CBI do? I have had to take up investigations on the orders of the government, and they were politically very powerful people, and I had a lot of problems during these investigations. But then the CBI was asked, say, look, look at the Harsh Harshat Mehta scandal. Right. How many government officials were involved, right from the RBI governor to managing directors of the state bank and the managing directors of the other Indian banks were involved with Harshad Mehta in this scandal. And they were investigated by, on the directions of the government. So government, oh, government supervises the CBI. Government has every right to direct the CBI to take up an investigation against a corrupt person. The probably the answer to this is that CBI should get all India jurisdiction and should be independent. Unfortunately, while the NIA has been created after the CBI and has got the all India jurisdiction, CBI is still not trusted by the states. Many states oppose CBI investigations. Many states, at least nine states to my knowledge today, have refused CBI permission to investigate. Probably the answer to that is the Supreme Court exercising its power under Section 142 and declare CBI as an independent investigation, asking it to report to an independent body like the Lok, Lok Dal, uh, Lok, uh, uh, what was that name? Anyway. Right. So, see, it is, we, people must see CBI as an independent investigating agency. No, but is it? Is and the that my can question be only is possible? All right, Mr. Azad if the wants CBI to come in. Is brought under the Supreme Court. Yes, yes, Mr. Azad wants to come in. So yes. the prowess of the CBI or any other investigating agency is not under question whether they're good at the job or not. The question yes. is that are they deciding who to go after or what to investigate independently or not, Mr. Azad? Uh, two things, you know, uh, one of the reasons why CBI cannot get the All India uh, jurisdiction like the NIA is because the states feel that corruption is a state subject. So, so you know, CBI on this particular issue, it's impossible for CBI to get an All India jurisdiction. Two of the most important parts relate to economic offenses and one is the corruption. Now, the second thing is, as, as, as you've asked, the investigation at the behest of the powers that be is fine to investigate a corruption case. But then the da further direction on the way investigation will go or the speed of investigation will go, that is not correct. And that is where the autonomy is required. You would appreciate, Tamanna, that many of the uh, corruption cases against some politicians slowed down, then somehow they stopped, then they began again. At, at, at specific times. So it is quite obvious that what you were talking about, the uh, quote from Supreme uh, Court or the otherwise, is absolutely stands to reason and it is correct. And that is exactly the perception in people's mind. A CBI is, and my, I always maintain this, that CBI is an outstanding organization as long as it handles a case which has got no political color. You see, the CBI does a brilliant job. The moment a political aspect is involved or it touches on the political fringes, and you see how the CBI behaves. That is the problem. And unless you have the distance, that is what the Chief Justice of India said, that between the police and the political executive, 
our performance will remain below par. So let's talk about, and you know, as we close this discussion, I think we should tell viewers what can possibly d be done or what two uh, veteran experts like yourselves think are the possible solutions. Mr. Sen, what is a system that can be put into place where any investigative agency can act truly independently no matter who's in power? As Mr. Azad very correctly said, CBI is hardly independent. CBI is not independent. No police agency is independent. So can we make them independent to the extent that they report to an independent agency? And I repeat, no parliament, no legislature will empower police agencies to be independent. We cannot expect them to do it. Of late, the Supreme Court has been exercising its powers under Article 142, which gives them the right to act as a state, gives them the right to make laws, make them, gives them a right to frame laws and implement laws. Let the Supreme Court be requested by some, somebody to look at these police agencies, at least the investigating wings of the police agencies. Time out of number, how many senior police officers have asked for independent police investigating agencies, separate investigating agencies? Supreme Court has also directed that separate the investigating agency from the law and order, but the politicians have not done it, and they will never do it. So it's time that the Supreme Court steps in under Article 142 mm -hmm. and directs separate investigating agencies independent of the state, reporting to some independent body like the CBC or anybody else they can create, or even themselves. If the police and the CBI are given powers to investigate independently, and no politicians looking over their shoulder, threatening transfer, suspension, or other actions, or misusing them, I can tell you this country will have the, one of the best police agencies in the world. Because our policemen are very intelligent. Yes. I have traveled in my CBI days well over 30 countries. And I can vouch for the integrity and for the ability as investigating officers of, of both police and CBI. Give them a chance to work independently. Right. But if you control them by threatening to transfer them, suspending them, then you will hardly have the police you deserve. All we right. have the police which we deserve. We, sh we should get more. I don't know if it's the police we deserve, but it's definitely the one that we have right now. Maybe the people of India do deserve, and I believe do deserve, independent investigative agencies. If there's corruption, root it out. Let the courts decide quickly and send the accused, sentence the accused as is fit. Let this uh, very long, delayed drama not go on and on, uh, putting the whole system under question. Thank you so much, Mr. Sen and Mr. Azad, for joining us uh, on this leg of the show this evening.